Section 7-2, example 5. So we're going to end ellipses, ellipses um, with um, a, a non-zero, zero center. So we're going to take these ellipses and just shift them to a new center. So we'll start with horizontal. So that means the H, um, the A is bigger for X, the X axis is longer. So these are the sideways ones. Um, so it shifts to a center of HK. And you can see that in the formula. Rather than X squared over A squared, we have X minus H squared over A squared. And rather than Y squared over B squared, we have Y minus K squared over B squared. And then again, A is the bigger one. So this is a horizontal ellipse. Um, vertices are technically the same. So let me show you why. So if we're doing a horizontal one, our vertices were plus or minus A zero, and now they're just shifted by H and K. So I don't really use the formula H plus or minus A comma K. I plot A zero, or I think about this value of A, and then I shift it. So I use the vertex to find them. Same with the foci. Um, the foci would normally be plus or minus C, zero, and you'll see they're just shifted by H and K. So H plus or minus C, comma K. And then same with the covertices, right? Normally they're zero plus or minus B, and you'll just see, again, they shift. So H is my horizontal shift and K is my vertical shift. And then the major axis, instead of being the the x or the y axis is now at the where the vertex is. So y equals k and x equals h, right? And that's because it goes through the vertex. And when I do the graph, you'll see how I do a lot of this without the formulas. Um, and then similar with vertical, um, it's just now um, we still have the same hk center, um, but now the y squared term gets the a squared. Otherwise, nothing really changes. Um, the vertices change, just it's 0 plus or minus a rather than plus or minus a0, and again they get shifted. So let's just check out an example. And you can see how the vertex is just shifting all the previous definitions. So to do this, um, we're going to have to complete the square. So hopefully we remember that a little bit. So again, when graphing an ellipse, um, I find the center, and then I find the foci and the vertices by shifting from the center. So rather than, again, using the formulas, I take the center and I just count. So as I do the example, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's complete the square for example 5. We have 9x squared plus 18x plus 4y squared minus 16y equals 11. And we want to make it look like one of these two equations, this one or this one. Um, one of the ellipses equations. So it looks like I'm going to have to complete the square to get those square terms, and then probably divide to make the other side equal to 1. So we'll start by completing the square. So this will be a good review. So when we have coefficients, we have to factor those coefficients out. So for the x's, we're going to do the x's and the y's separately. So for the x's, I'm going to go ahead and factor out 9. And then we get x squared plus 2x, and I'm going to leave space to complete the square. For the y's, we're going to factor out 4, because we just want a single y squared. So plus 4, y squared minus 4y, and I'll leave some space again to complete the square. Equals 11. So to complete the square, we're going to take that middle one, the middle term, the linear term. We divide by 2. So we'll take our... 2 divided by 2, and we get 1. And then we go ahead and square that, and we get 1. So we're going to go ahead and add 1 for the x to complete the square. And then I have to add 1 to the other side. The problem is, is it's not 1, it's 1 times 9 because of the coefficient. So I'm really adding 9 times 1 to the other side. For the y's, we're going to take the middle term, the negative 4, divide by 2. And we get negative 2, and when we square that, we get 4. So we'll add 4. And then we're technically not adding 4 to the other side. We're adding 4 times 4, because that coefficient would be multiplied by that. So we'll add 4 times 4. So we're going to get 9. The x squared plus 2x plus 1 becomes x plus 1 squared plus 4 
and then y squared minus 4y plus 4 becomes y minus 2 squared. And then we get 11 plus 9 plus 16, which I think is 36. And we're almost there. All right. And then what else do we need to do? Um, we need to divide by 36 because we need the right side to be 1. So divide everything by 36. Go ahead and divide those and simplify. And we should get, what do we get? 9 over 36 becomes 1 over 4. So x plus 1 squared over 4. We get uh, 4 over 36 is 9. So y minus 2 squared over 9 equals 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center first. I find that to be the easiest way to do this. So we'll find the center, and then we can shift to find the foci and the vertices, rather than using formulas. We don't need too many formulas. So my center will be negative 1 and 2. Negative 1, right? It's the opposite. Minus h would be plus a negative 1, or minus a negative 1 gives me plus 1, and then minus 2. So let's go ahead and graph. Um, let's see. Um, we don't get very big numbers here, so I'm going to, again, count by halves like I've been doing. Just to space it out a little. And my center is at negative 1 and 2. Um, I went a little too far on the graph. I'm going to go down a little bit. You'll see why in a second. Negative 1 and 2. All right, so that's my center. And then the a squared and the b squared kind of tell me where the vertices are. So rather than using formulas again, I'm just going to use um, what we learned. So we know a squared is 9 because a is the bigger one. So a is 3. Since that's y, that just means in the y direction we go 3. 1, 2, 3. So that's a vertice, a vertex. The other direction we go 1, 2, 3. So that's my other vertex. And so then rather than using a formula, I can just kind of count to find them. I find that easier. So my center is negative 1, 2. So my vertex um, will still be negative 1 and negative 1, right? The x value hasn't changed. But we've gone up 3 and down 3. So up 3 would be 2 plus 3, which is 5. And then down 3 would be 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. So I think this is easier than formulas. You can totally feel differently. So we have negative 1, 5 and negative 1, 1 for my vertices. Um, we'll find the co-vertices because that helps us graph the, the horizontal direction. So b squared is 4, so b is 2, which means we're going to go 2 left and right. 1, 2, and then 1, 2. So now the y value is not changing. And so then we have negative 1 plus 2 gives me 1 for my vertex on the right, and then negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 for my vertex on the left. So those are my co-vertices. At negative 3, 2, and 1, 2. So I was doing these formulas. I, we were doing um, plus or minus b from hk without using the formula. And so we have the ellipse. Let's just find the foci, because the foci are important. Kind of an ellipse. I drew the best I could. So let's find c, and then we can find the foci. So c squared is a squared minus b squared. So in this case, a squared is 9, b squared is 4. So c squared is 5, or c is square root 5 which is about 2.2, just so we can find the graph. And so the, vert the foci will be vertical, because we're in the vertical example. So we're just going to, again, go up and down from the center. So 1, 2, so we go a little bit above 2. 
one, two, we go a little bit beyond two. And those are my foci. And then I could find those values as well. So again, the x value is not changing. It's still negative one. We're only going up and down. And then it'll be two plus root five for the upper one. Whatever that value is, you could approximate it, but we can leave it as is. And it'll be negative one, two minus root five for the lower one, because that's how far we're traveling. And again, we're using the formula. We're taking the center, hk, and then we're adding and subtracting root five. But I am, I think, Visual is a little bit easier to me, but you can plug into the formula as well. So those are my foci. I'll just write those down in my list of important points, and we'll be done with the graph. So hopefully you like my method. If you don't, that's fine. Use the formulas. Um, I just think we often get overwhelmed when we have too many formulas. So once you plot the center, you can kind of count to find all the other pieces. So I'll see you back for the next section.